bouncers walking in and actually telling you to stop or get out of the club. Do you think it was a mistake that you were born a boy? I've come to, uh, not to peace with my body, but I've accepted myself where I am completely. Somebody may say you are lying. Uh, because if you have accepted yourself completely as uh, you are, you would be uh, the boy that your mom gave birth to. I can self-actualize. I can become what I want to be at the end of the day. Water wise, water is an essential need. The scarcity of it could lead to loss of many lives, including livestock, plants, and much more. It requires us to use it sparingly and responsibly in times of need, failing which our taps and sanitation will not function. For more on water and weather issues, stay tuned to News Today, every Friday at quarter to five Central African time. SABC News, making you water wise. Good morning and welcome to yet another exciting edition of your favorite Sunday morning program, Media Monitor, where we unpack the news that hung the headlines of the week. We are live right here on the SABC News Channel 4. For with myself, Alicia Jolly, as your host, thank you for choosing us. The topics that we'll be tackling this morning are as follows. We start by discussing the highlights of the three-day ANC's NEC meeting currently taking place. It's final day uh, It's uh, in Irene. And ESCOM continues to face scrutiny over the reappointment of Brian Molefe. We also talk continental news focusing on Lesotho and Zambia. And finally discuss the Bafana Bafana team selected to face Nigeria for the opening match of the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. But you know the drill. Before we engage all of that, let's first take a quick look at the news that are hogging the headlines this hour. The NC's NEC enters its final day today following a three-day meeting in Irene outside of Pretoria. Yesterday, the ruling party officially opened its succession debate. However, it added that nominations will only be accepted in September. The Vatid Plouf municipality in the Western Cape has launched an investigation into the conduct of some of its law enforcement officers. A video posted on social media shows four municipal law enforcement officers pouting alleged thieves with the apples they were believed to have stolen. The mayor says she will meet with the victims to assure they get the necessary support following the incident. And it's sad news as Highlands Park were relegated back to the National First Division after they drew to all with African champions Mamelodi Sundowns. Baraka FC got a much needed three points when they beat Ajax Cape Town in their own backyard to move out of the automatic relegation spot. And they will now play in the playoffs as they attempt to keep their top flight status. Let's welcome our guest today, SABC Digital News producer, Mr. Tsepi Somosh. Tsepi, so good morning. Good morning to you, Alicia. Morning. And of course, on the main desk, we do have SABC foreign editor, Sophie Mukwena, political analyst, Professor Sipo Siep, and Professor Dirk Kutia. Lady and gentlemen, a very good morning to all three of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank morning. you. Good morning. Sophie, you look absolutely amazing. I just had to say that. So, let's That's take good. it away. Let's kick it off with the biggest hashtag of this week. Which one was it? Kosatu. Ah. And, and now, Alicia, this comes after Kosatu announced that President Jacob Zuma will be barred from addressing Kosatu activities in the future. Mm -hmm. And we know that the, the reason for that is because on May the 1st, President Jacob Zuma was scheduled to address um, a Kosatu rally in Bloemfontein, but that didn't happen because um, was he was booed. Yeah. Yes. And after Kosatu um, took that decision on Tuesday, they um, announced that President Jacob Zuma will now be barred. And these are some of the tweets from people saying um, <laughs> the, the bearing of him to address. 
interesting. What's this picture about? So you it's, know it's, we love you, my media <laughs> this, monitor. Now, Alicia, this one is a picture of, pre of Deputy <laughs> President Cyril Ramaphosa celebrating after the news that Kosatu has barred President Jacob Zuma from addressing <laughs> its activities. <laughs> I see. Kusema SA says, live scenes of Ramaphosa's reactions when he heard hashtag Kosatu has banned President Zuma from all its events. Thank you so much for that. Let's look at more tweets if there are any. What is that about? This one is from <laughs> Shoni saying, this one is from Shoni saying, um, Kossat, hashtag Kossat CEC has resolved that President Jacob Zuma shall no longer address the activities in whatever capacity. And there's a picture of the president above there in a shocked state. And Lady B says, hashtag Kosatu, this news has just made my day. <laughs> well done, Team Kosatu. Finally, a sane decision amidst all the madness in this country and some memes, I suppose, of all uh, <laughs> yes. a couple of workers there. Yeah. there Makarap is also laughing. Do you want to take that final tweet? Yes, this one <laughs> says, Kosatu has been Jacob has been. President Jacob Zuma from addressing all its gatherings. Well, Professor Sipo Ziep was also having a laugh here. Prof, what was your take on the developments? Well, politically, this is consistent with uh, what Kosatu had said. Yeah. I mean, there's really, we should not expect anything. If they had said something else, they'll be creating a problem. But most importantly, uh, Kosatu is preparing itself on the post Zuma. Uh, reality mm -hmm. and uh, so you can't be backing somebody who's on his way out so that uh, that always happens that uh, people start uh, thinking about the future so that's not, that's the the first thing that uh, must be clear but also there are not many meetings and I don't think there are any meetings that the president or the ANC is going to address before the president steps down and that is the issue that was was raised that, but uh, which meeting do you have in mind where he was going to appear and yeah. they, they couldn't find one so this is there's also a political understanding but there's also right. an issue of political consistency okay Prof. professor could see a quick one <laughs> Well, I, I think I, I agree with Professor Sierpe. There is, is a consistency. It started with the National Congress in November 2015 already, <coughs> when they ad adopted a resolution in favour of the old way of, or the existing way of succession. Yeah. But I, I think over and above the fact that it is aimed at President Zuma, I think it is more aimed at the whole group supporting President Zuma. Mm. So by implication, indirectly, it might have an effect on Dr. Tlamini Zuma. And I think what is, what is here an important point is, is that Kusatu says we are not willing to open up for your campaigning yeah. in our ranks. And I think that is possibly the most significant part of this decision. All right. Sophie, do you want to take a one, quick one? I think, yes, the decision has been taken, but it's not good for the ANC as the leader of the alliance and mm -hmm. President Zuma is the leader of the alliance. Indeed, uh, we are not expecting big gatherings for Kusatu, but uh, on Monday, the Central Committee meeting, extended one, is starting. And yeah. one would expect the ANC president as the leader of the alliance to address the, uh, the, the mm. federation. But unfortunately, it looks like uh, it won't be President Zuma this weekend at okay. or Monday. But also, the problem is Kosatu is expected to attend the ANC policy conference. Those who support President Jacob Zuma, will they allow a, a Kosatu members to participate in the policy conference? Interesting observation, Sophie. Let's leave it there yeah, at it, this it, stage. It, 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 so, it, let's move on to the next big hashtag of this week. What was the next big hashtag? The what are we looking at here? This, hmm. The next big hashtag um, was ESCOM. And this comes after Public Enter Enterprise Minister Lynn Brown was appearing in Parliament mm -hmm. and he was asked questions about the reinstatement of CEO Brian Mulefe. And these are some of the reactions from <laughs> social media. This was the tweet that was, <laughs> that yeah. was doing the round, this meme actually. Making sense of ESCOM, the executive summary, Wimpy van der Merwe. And this one is from Sengazo Zibi saying, so Lynn Brown is going to investigate herself. No name required, says at Sakina Commando. Now we know why Pravin did resign. He was haunting ESCOM board yesterday. Zuma Gutas thought they are done with him. Let's take a quick final one then. This one is a meme actually <laughs> saying, but ESCOM SA, I didn't say a word about Brian Mulefe today, but why am I without electricity? <laughs> What's the punishment for? <laughs> Professor Kutia? Yeah, I, I think the situation of Brian Mulef is becoming slightly out of hand at yeah. this stage because it's all sorts of interpretations of what was his status while he was in Parliament and now that he's back. We've seen now that the Cabinet is going to um, start with an investigation yes. about ESCOM in general, um, which is in a sense exceptional because it, it does give us some indication of 
or it, we must find out who exactly is taking now the decisions with respect to ESCOM. Is it still the president or is it the, the minister? Mm -hmm. And given the fact that she has received such an odd ex, uh, reception in parliament at the portfolio committee, the fact that she also indicated that she's not going to oppose the DA's application um, for the reinstatement of Brian Mulevi appears to be as if Brian Mulevi might be on his way out ultimately. Mm, we're going to talk further in detail on the story. Let's move on to the next big hashtag. So before we run out of time, and of course, we can't forget about this one. Happy Africa Day. Mom Sophie clearly representing us today. Hey, Indeed. What and are we looking at here? The final, uh, the final hashtag for today is Africa Day. And we know that the African continent on, fr on Thursday um, mm -hmm. was celebrating Africa Day. And uh, although celebrations were taking place across the country, Alicia, an unfortunate incident happened um, when uh, DA uh, leader Musi Maimani mm. was barred from entering Zambia. And that got many people angry, mm. saying um, this must must be condemned despite of our political affiliation. What and here are some of Twitter? the tweets. Mm. Nobu Kosinguenya says it's hashtag Africa Day celebrating the potential Africa holds and is yet to realize. Hmm, thank and you for the, that. Uh, this one is a meme of um, Mbuise Nindlozi yes. saying, why was my money going to Zambia? Can he discipline Zile first? Mm, let's look at the final tweets. More memes coming through. Uh, Amor's mom saying Mosi was denied entry in hashtag Zambia on hashtag Africa Day. Professor uh, Siapa? Well, uh, first of all, I think the celebration of uh, Africa Day is very important. Yeah. Uh, we come from a history where we were taught as South Africans that uh, the continent is there and we're there. And even when we talk, we talk about the Africa as if we're disconnected. <laughs> yeah. But what is also important is really a celebration of the strides we've made in terms of uh, demographic, democratic uh, governance. There are elections that are taking place. There's uh, more peace today than there was in, in the past. So that celebration is very important. But also, as the former president was also saying, that uh, it affords us with an opportunity to find our voice and so that... Uh, we don't outsource the responsibility of thinking that mm -hmm. we think for ourselves and we resolve our issues. And he went further to say we even theorize around the, the developments that are taking place in Africa. Mm -hmm. So the moments like this create that opportunity for us to celebrate that. The Muslim mind, I'm sure we're going to deal with it uh, yeah, much yeah. later. All right. Well, that's where we leave it with the digital segment. So thank you so much. That URL for our viewers once again. Um, viewers at home can uh, search for SABC Digital News on YouTube for any shows. Uh, or alternatively, they can visit www.sabc.co.za forward slash news. All right. And Media Monitor will be available at 10 o'clock when we're done. Let's take a quick ad break now and when we return we discuss the major talking points that are coming out of the NC's NEC meeting currently on its third and final day out in Irene. It's all coming up after this break. Water wise, water is an essential need. The scarcity of it could lead to loss of many lives, including livestock, plants, and much more. It requires us to use it sparingly and responsibly in times of need, failing which our taps and sanitation will not function. For more on water and weather issues, stay tuned to News Today, every Friday at quarter to five Central African time. SABC News, making you water wise. And the news of the day, the ANC's National Executive Committee is currently sitting in Irene near Pretoria ahead of the 5th National Policy Conference at the end of June. And on Thursday, ANC stalwarts reiterated their call through an open letter for Zuma to be recalled and for the party to convene a national consultative conference ahead of its elective conference, which takes place in December. It has also emerged that a motion of no confidence was tabled yesterday that calls for the president to step down. Let's find out more on this clip. 
you must be allowed to talk about a name and discuss names in respect of the principles that are there. Well, it's apparent. The NEC is trailing behind its structures. About eight months ago, some KZN branches endorsed Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa to succeed President Jacob Zuma. This was then countered by the ANC Women's League, which threw its weight behind Nkosa Zanatlamini Zuma. The Eastern Cape's Amatola region has its sights set on Lindiwe Sisulu. And as it stands, Matthews Posa is the only presidential hopeful who has publicly accepted his endorsement from a Western Cape branch. There's no doubt that even though lobbying has been happening behind closed doors, the NEC opening the discussion on the names will certainly intensify the race. But the party could be facing debates on two fronts, a succession debate and a motion of no confidence debate in the incumbent. We are reading it on the newspapers that there's going to be blood on the floor. We've not seen that blood on the floor yet. Uh, discussion are about to start and unfold, uh, but we have not seen it. It's not an agenda item. But if the events of the last NEC in 2016 are anything to go by, nothing stops the matter being raised from the floor. And then there's also the open letter from the stalwarts who have called on the NEC to consider recalling the president. Aldrin Simpia, SABC News, Pretoria. Well, let's start with the latest news that were leaked yesterday. We're not sure about uh, the truth. If uh, the motion was indeed debated of whether or not the president should step down. Let's start with you, Professor Sia. Actually, the motion was tabled mm -hmm. and members of the ANC began uh, making their own inputs. And to the best of our knowledge is that um, there are about 65 members who had actually said they want to express themselves on the subject. And only a small number have actually spoken, and I'm told that the number is almost 50 that will be entertaining or who are waiting to speak on that. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna, going to be a very long session. And uh, linked to that is uh, there are quite, a, quite a number of things that they give almost impetus uh, to the discussion. One is the uh, exposés that we see today in, yeah. the, in the media. Uh, but with the city press as well as Sunday, Sunday Times. Times. Uh, w w some of them may have been denied or most of them have been denied. But uh, the point is that uh, the timing is also uh, very convenient and deliberate. It's uh, really to set the members of the ANC into a particular mode of thinking yeah. and uh, while the, the debate is taking place. But uh, effectively what you see is uh, almost a, a beleaguered presidency. But uh, as Sophie and I were talking earlier, that when you have a president who's serving a um, second term and whose term is coming to an end, people are always emboldened to, me, uh, to try that element uh, of pushing him out because they start thinking outside the person. Mm. And um, so what we see here are really those machinations where, they, unfor unfortunately, they would happen in any country, anywhere else. But here you also have uh, these uh, issues that uh, need to be responded to. I mean, the Brian Molefe matter yeah. is still a sticking point and yeah. some people will use it against the president. Then you have this exposés that says the, the Gupta family has um, been so much involved in the affairs of the state and people will use that. But uh, uh, unfortunately, the NC is going to be derailed from also talking about other things. But what they have managed to talk about, at least, it's also that which the NC thought it would control, the idea of uh, the succession debate. Uh, we see members of the ANC being invited to avail themselves. And uh, effectively, the ANC is being forced to say, your processes in the past are not going to be sustainable. It mm -hmm. is already happening. You are actually behind. Uh, the so effectively, when they began to pronounce, pronounce themselves on the matter of succession, they were really late. It was already okay. happening. Okay, Prof. Sophie, do you think we're going to uh, get the outcomes of that motion by the end of the NEC meeting today? 
Indeed, I suspect the ANC will definitely call a press conference to try and clarify this matter. Yeah. Because in any case, uh, tomorrow morning the newspapers will have the story. I think uh, when the discussions have been concluded, a decision has been taken whether to vote or not to vote, the ANC will finally, after the whole process, invite media and share some light in terms of what transpired. I just want to add to what the prof said. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've been here before 2007. It was similar. The only difference is that uh, this time around it's more aggressive and uh, it speaks to how politics have changed and I think the leadership that will be elected uh, in December the ANC must ensure that as soon as they take office discipline 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 because yeah. what is happening now mm. you know the precedence was set in 2007 and people are doing the same and it is for that reason the branches are pronouncing because they know the more you delay you end up losing because when you look at what Halima did uh, towards Bloomfontein he kept mm. saying no no I'll follow the process I'll follow the process and too little too late the same with Mbeg no 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 I'll wait when the branches pronounce pronounce and then too little too late when other people were already running and campaigning mm. at night mm. and during the day breakfast and everywhere. Mm. So I think the branches have learned from the best. They are doing exactly what the leaders are doing. That is why discipline, discipline, discipline. If you're not disciplined, it ends like this. Professor Kutia? Yeah, I think this is, again, I, I agree that this is that the NEC is a bit behind the developments within the ANC itself. Uh, we've seen it that the two main contenders are all over the country. They are addressing many different um, major e events, and it is interpreted by, by everyone as already part of the election campaign. Though it is, it can be a Labor Day event, or it can be in any event, uh, even a funeral, but it is seen as part of the campaigning that's taking place. The endorsement by the different leagues have taken place already. Uh, a, a province like the Northern Cape at their provincial co conference, they made their endorsement already. So it has gone quite a long way uh, down the line already. I, I think what we are now seeing is, is in a sense that it's going to open up, but it's not going to change the situation in a very dramatic sense. Maybe it's now more possible for the candidates to say, yes, I'm available, and speak, go to different events as as part of an election campaign and not simply trying to use an excuse to go to start or to de deal with their election campaign. But in essence, I think we are in the midst of an election campaign already. But then uh, what, do you th what can we expect to see after this NEC uh, uh, meeting? Are we going to see a further divided ANC or a, a united front, Prof? Well, I, I'm not sure. I cannot predict the future. But uh, normally when the ANC meets, uh, what they do, they have robust discussions. But what is important is really... But I mean, the issues on some the table. voices yeah. that are going to come, like uh, what uh, Sophie was saying earlier, that uh, what is really good for the ANC. Uh, because uh, if you don't answer that question, you might actually be swayed by the currents that uh, are anti the ANC and have historically been anti the ANC. Mm -hmm. You can't jump at some people who want to see the destruction of the ANC without asking, in the end... Uh, where do we stand as an organization? So the, uh, as she says that uh, when they pronounce, they'll be driven more by those considerations. But the debate must actually happen. The, because if you don't allow that debate to, t to happen, it will happen outside and it will weaken the movement. Mm. So the movement must be seen to have entertained these issues. If it does not, uh, then people will entertain it on its behalf. So I think that's uh, the first thing. But the, the second thing is that uh, they need to also understand that uh, the ANC has been unable to respond to all the noises. I mean, if you take, for instance, uh, the Safe South Africa uh, movement, you take uh, another movement that has started, you take um, the veterans, all those things, uh, the ANC must be seen to be saying, we are aware of this and this is our response. Mm -hmm. But to be silent would be also to undermine the very organizations that they want to protect. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me is uh, very important that uh, ultimately sobriety must uh, come in. And I'll say for, for, for uh, uh, where I see things is that uh, the president would be out in December. Mm -hmm. So the, what the ANC needs to do is to ask, uh, do, can we risk what happened when the president Zoom, uh, Tabu Mbig was, uh, was removed. Because the trauma that occurred then would actually be revisited to be almost multiplied if it happens now. Mm -hmm. But it's very important for them to look at that. But there's also another issue that actually, the last point I want to raise on this, is the calls for, that the deputy president has talked about uh, 
around ESCOM, the notion of judicial commission of inquiry. And I, I had uh, a sense that um, the whole st state of capture thing, it, it's something that um, there's less hostility about uh, looking at it because some people want to look at it not only to focus on the Guptas, yeah. but to look at uh, how almost 98% of control of the economy yeah. is still in white hands. So they're saying, let's go for it. And I think if they do that, it will be good for them because what it will do, it will show a certain leadership that says, let's open this so that all the noise mm. that is being made is actually being laid back because we need to Let move Let me hear the other this. points there, Professor. Sophie, what do you think about that? I mean, there's also a student's or an academic's report that is, uh, has formed the basis of this uh, NEC discussions as well as the church uh, council's reports that's going to be looked at. And they are pointing towards state of capture. I think the sooner the commission starts its work, the better, mm -hmm. because people can then vent their anger or present whatever evidence they have. So they need they to have, deal with it And they will on. be protected. And I think the Judicial Commission of Inquiry is the only platform that will have capacity to deal with this problem. If it is not dealt with properly, it will continue to play itself in public domain mm, and mm, people will mm. continue to push and uh, at times it will be misinformation. I think the better, the sooner you, 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 you appoint that Judicial Commission of Inquiry to deal with this matter, the better. And I'm happy that on Friday President Zuma uh, confirmed that he supports the, yeah. the commission. So I think now th this matter must, must be handled with care and it must start its work. All it right. will also come you know, the noise. All right. Well, let's hope so. Let's take a quick ad break. And after that, ESCOM continues to remain under the spotlight for the reappointment of its CEO, Brian Molife. That's all coming up when Media Monitor returns. is getting more and more digitized and people have to navigate through an increasingly connected world. I did a call my bay over here. Yeah, at school I use my Wi-Fi. On Network we tell you about Africa's technology and social media landscape. Politicians already do use Twitter a lot. It's both Android and iOS compatible. A solar charged box that includes everything, the computer, the projector. That's Network with Ms. Pumele Lezondi every Sunday at 9 p.m. Let's deal with ESCOM now. Their troubles continue to hog the headlines following the reinstatement of Brian Malief to the state utility. The shocking reinstatement has put corporate governance of state-owned enterprises under the spotlight. And Federation Union of South Africa, FEDUSA, says it will hold the managers of the SOEs personally responsible for corruption and the mismanagement and have, be, and have them declared delinquent directors. President Zuma has appointed a trio of ministers, which includes Justice Minister Michael Masuta, Public Enterprise Minister Lynn Brown, as well as Finance Minister Malusi Kika, but to gather the facts related to Malife's reappointments. Let's find out more on this clip. Mr. Brian Molefi and Dr. Ben Nukumbani, they don't know what's waiting for them. We are going to prosecute them and have them declared delinquent directors. The Dusa Congress have passed a resolution in that regard. And we will follow them in their personal capacity. And we will work with the assets um, 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 protector unit so that we can make sure that ill-gotten things that they got, it will be returned and it will be sold to make up for the losses that our country suffered. Professor Kutsia, people are asking, how is it that uh, after Minister Lynn Brown has been summoned for her handling of the reappointment of Brian Malief, and now she's on the team that has been appointed by the president to look into his reappointment? Your views? Yeah, on, on the surface of it, it might look like a slight conflict of interest, but this is not a formal commission. This is something, just a committee or subcommittee of cabinet. 
So ultimately, this committee must advise the cabinet about what should be the situation. I think that the main problem for her is that all the focus was on her in Parliament, uh, in the Portfolio Committee. We've seen how the former Minister of Finance, for example, dealt with her and accused her and the board of ESCOM about the mis mismanagement there. So I think it is trying to deviate the attention of slightly away from her, that there is now more of a sense of collective responsibility from, from Cabinet. Um, and then they have to report back to, to President Zuma and, and the Cabinet in general. So we should see it not as a type of a commission of inquiry, as what we talked about the other commissions. It is an internal matter which has been done um, by, the, by President Zuma and, and by the Cabinet. But uh, what I think what we should see ultimately is more clarity about what actually has happened there. Um, because there are so many different interpretations. Yeah. Is it uh, early retirement? Is it uh, without pay? Resignation. Mm. And this has to be clarified now because he, he went, he left uh, ESCOM under quite a cloud. You know? I mean, we think about the Shabin stories also. And he has to establish, he has to rebuild his credibility in the process as a person um, because he's, he still has a future somewhere in, in the public life in South Africa. Mm. Sophie? I think uh, Parliament also must come on board, and many people have questioned the fact that with the SABC uh, there was swift action in terms of appointing a ad hoc committee yeah. to deal with the matter, mm -hmm. which uh, I think this time around, if the same it's not done with ESCOM, people will begin to question how ministers are treated. Some departments are better than others. If the communications department was... Uh, put to this test why the enterprise can't uh, experience the same uh, uh, test in terms of ensuring that you address the problems there at ESCOM. Therefore, I think Parliament, Cabinet must really uh, speed up the process to deal with ESCOM matter. And I think uh, the ministers will be gathering facts and I am optimistic that a, a more credible process will kick in to ensure that a solution is found at ESCOM. And I think Parliament cannot, cannot stand aside and not do something to investigate. In the same way, mm. they were quick to deal with SABC. Professor Sepp, I mean, it seems the issue with SOEs is the mismanagement and or, or the, the, the lack of leadership within those SOEs. And it doesn't seem to be the narrative that will be discussed when it comes to the NEC. No, I think uh, it will come in. You see, sometimes uh, the the concerns when they are raised, they all point out to the issue of governance, but they, they may have a, 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 veiled, a public face yeah. uh, to them. But the issue is, uh, has uh, the board acted in a manner that is expected Absolutely. in terms of its uh, fiduciary responsibility? But what is also important is also what Dave was saying around uh, the, how cabinet works, that uh, you normally have, cabinet must also, as leading, as an executive, must have an opinion. And what you do, you do bring around the ministers who uh, might uh, provide a sense. So having the minister of justice is also to deal with the issues of law. Having a minister of finance, you also have to deal with whether this was consistent with the Public Finance Management Act. Then having also the minister involved there is also to say, I do not want to undermine the a colleague to make sure that the colleague, you are in charge of this enterprise. Make sure that you give us effects. Mm. Then only then can even the executive express itself. Then you also have cabinet because ultimately if, uh, actually the parliament, ultimately if we are not making headway, that's when the matter will then go to the judiciary. But at least there should be that. But what is most important is that there is also the ANC to accept responsibility. Yeah. One is the political management of this. Because uh, when Brian left, he had made certain statements that uh, were embraced about the corporate governance, yeah. about uh, the integrity and all that. Now, when you come back, mm -hmm. you, you need to add, respond to those issues that, that you had made. And of course, there's an issue of now, uh, when some of us thought it was a resignation, now we understand it was a retirement. So all those facts oh, must be gathered sure so that we, we, we must have <laughs> clarity on. But uh, again, it goes back to the fundamental thing that our constitution promotes, that if you are transparent, you, you, you stand 
they will, you, you actually protect yourself where if you make a mistake, people will point it out. But if you are not transparent, you'll find yourself always running to try to correct things. Mm. So the whole notion of transparency, transparency and accountability is very important. And the, I think the SOEs, there is a, going to be a focus. But as I say, the way it will, be, it will express itself in reality, it will not be the way the academics in business schools will do. It will be a public face that will be put on the dock. Professor Kutsia, I mean, Professor Siepe says we need to make headway in these issues. How do they make headway when documents pertaining to the reinstatement have now suddenly gone missing? Yeah, that, that is a serious matter because I think it well, can be interpreted as an under, undermining of this accountability that, that he, he was talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I think what we are going to expect is, or what I expect is, is that at the policy conference now in about a month's time, this matter will become a major theme of, of discussion. Um, because I think within the ANC itself, there's serious concerns mm -hmm. about the SOEs and the management and the, and the embarrassment it creates to South Africa as a society in general, to the ANC, to the government, everyone. Because many of these SOEs have been even downgraded before the, the national downgrade yeah. took, up, uh, took place. Um, and it, 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 they do play a very important economic role in the, in, in the South African economy. In terms of infrastructure, if it's about public transport, if it's about electricity, water supply, all of them. So if they are not in good shape, it affects everyone. It affects the, the society in general. It affects the business world, the economy, uh, the agriculture, everything. So therefore, it is absolutely important that they are in the best possible shape. And I think mm -hmm. most people start to understand that. And if there's even to, to sort of talk about that other sectors must come under state management, yeah. like, for example, a state bank or so, then everyone will say, but look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are they managed? Can we still now afford to introduce other sort of new state-owned mm -hmm. state enterprises? So from all perspectives, it is very important that they... They are corrected uh, the management, the governance that are taking place there. All right. Well, that's where we leave it on the topic. After the break, is Lesotho ready for the general elections? That's all coming up in your Continental Stories after this break. Welcome back to Media Monitor. While most people were celebrating Africa Day this past Thursday, DA leader Musi Maimani was barred from entering Zambia, where he had gone to attend the treason trial of opposition leader Hakayinde Hichilema. In other continental news, Lesotho is set to head to the polls on the 3rd of June. Or could the tiny mountainous kingdom be head for political stability? For more on all these stories, we're very pleased to be joined by SABC foreign editor Sophie Mogwena. But before all of that, let's take a look at this insert first. After three elections within less than five years, the fatigued voters and the citizens deserve a different durable outcome. The SADC mission will monitor both pre- and post-election and deliver its preliminary statement two days after the election. It will urge all parties to accept the outcome if the election is declared free and fair. But if you just don't want to accept the results because you, you, you just want to be selfish and yourself, 
I think all those who are watching, all of us who are witnesses and guarantors, we must stand up. Let's talk about Lesotho elections, Sophie. I mean, Lesotho have always, uh, elections there have always been uh, controversial, even leading to some serious bloodshed of even some key political figures. Do you think this is going to be finally uh, the election that uh, takes uh, Lesotho out of a long stalemate? Well, I doubt. The problem there is the constitution. You have a situation where floor crossing is allowed. All the time when politicians become disgruntled in parliament and then the floor crossing happens and therefore it always results in a situation where you must go to fresh elections and unless they amend that constitution mm. you'll continue to have this problem so i'm hoping that sadek will put pressure on lesotho to start with the uh, amendment of the constitution Mm, all right. What else do you think are some of the issues that Lesotho needs to address before they go to the polls uh, on, on the 3rd of June or should have been addressed? I mean, we know issues about security and also the campaigning hasn't been uh, what it should have been, uh, particularly in a country like Lesotho. Well, I think the issue of security has been partially addressed. Yeah. And you are aware that the Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa, who is the mediator, has been to that country many times. You would recall that the SADC meeting earlier this year emphasized the fact that there must be security. And mm -hmm. of course, the political parties, the opposition in particular, has made pronouncements in terms of what they would like to see happening during the election, particularly no army. Uh, the army. But the yeah. problem there, normally, to transport the ballot boxes to the countryside in the mountains, you must use the, the army. And uh, I don't see the army not playing a role completely. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think they'll have to iron out how are they going to transport the ballot boxes and the ballot papers to the countryside, particularly the mountains. You must use the army choppers. There's just no way. Mm, going back to, to, to the issue of the amendment of the Constitution, Sophie, this is what I find interesting. The particular detail that a lot of Basutu are not happy about are the, the, the powers between the king and the prime minister. So, I mean, what do you think needs to change there? I don't know how are they going to handle this because you'd recall that uh, Lesotho has experienced political instability for quite a long time. Yeah. You have the monarchy who previously had uh, uh, strong powers and later uh, during the coup and he was sent to exile the late King Litsie II. Yeah. And uh, the, his powers were changed and therefore currently it's a different setup. Mm -hmm. The king doesn't have a say, he just... Uh, uh, implement like what the yeah. prime minister says. It's not like uh, in Swaziland. Therefore, uh, I don't know whether they want to go back where the monarchy has got powers or what is the best solution, but they must deal with this issue of ensuring that uh, the constitution is in line with democracy and particularly at this time where there are different ways of dealing with problems. Mm, very interesting to see some of the exiled leaders, uh, Tom Tabane, fall back, uh, back in full swing campaigning for their various parties. And what, what did you make of that? Well, I think uh, Tom Tabane is a veteran politician and yeah. he has been there, different governments, he has served as a minister. So that alleviates all security fears. So yes, it, yes. It, it means that the country is heading towards a stable uh, democracy. I think election will happen and mm -hmm. peace will prevail and people will go to the polls and they will decide. But my problem is it's unlikely that we'll get an outright winner. Yeah. So you are still going to battle with the coalition uh, government and therefore very unstable. Very unstable indeed. Well, Zambia sparked the eye of many in the continent when the authorities were denied DA, denied uh, DA leader Musi Maimani entry into the country and subsequently deported him. Let's first get a, let's take a look at this insert and then we'll get your comment, Sophie. History must decide which side do we stand on. Do we stand on the side of dictators, Lungu, Mugabe et al., or do we want to stand for democracy and simply say that opposition have a right to stand up, democracy must stand, and ultimately we must free HH in Zambia? What did you make of the deportation, Sophie? Was it well, legal? I think Let's start there. 
legal or not legal, I mean, I don't understand why Zambia uh, caused this day. I mean, they should have just allowed my money to go to Zambia. My man doesn't have capacity to destabilize any country. Neither can he destabilize South Africa. But also, when you look at what DA stands for as a democratic uh, party, I don't see them destabilizing any country. Neither will they destabilize South Africa. My man has, doesn't have a capacity to destabilize any country. But at least uh, it has uh, kind of attracted headlines, local and international, and has put uh, Zambia on a spotlight. Because my problem with Zambia is this. There was a former liberation uh, uh, organization of KK Kaunda that is currently not in power. You have an uh, opposition uh, who have taken power. Mm -hmm. Now they are doing exactly what they have been accusing the then ruling party of doing. And, I mean, it, we, we cannot allow that in the SADC region, neither on the continent. I mean, the, it, it, it is time that leaders understand that people must be allowed to express their views. Mm. If someone uh, breaks the law, then you can arrest the person. But you don't just, I mean, them saying my man is utterances on judiciary. Um, my man doesn't have capacity to destabilize any country. <laughs> so there really is no issue for you here. No issue. They should have just allowed my money to go to court and then the judiciary uh, maintain its independence and they do what is right and then my money comes back to South Africa. Mm. All right. So let's talk about this. I mean, the fact that Zambia is now in the spotlight. I mean, uh, after the, at the WEF, we saw a lot of calls for South Africa or Africa to promote this intra-trade and intra-relations. What does this then do? Uh, to such programs to try and, and, and move the countries forward or the continent forward? Well, in terms of regional integration, it will continue. It is uh, a, a big project. No one can stop that project. Uh, this is just a small hiccup. And I think, like I say to you, mm -hmm. I don't understand why Zambians made a big halabaloo out of my money going to Zambia. He doesn't have capacity mm, to destabilize but, any country. But then uh, it, doesn't the country have right to deny him entry? I think that should be the what biggest question. What are the country's rights in terms of saying, okay, we're going to bar a certain individual from entering the country based on our assertions that he's here to do A, B, C, D, E. Is the country that not then legally bound by its own constitution to put out such Unless a laws? Unless the stability of the country. Well, that's what my they feel. My doesn't have capacity to destabilize Zambia. Okay, that's, that's my view. And, <laughs> that's your and view. I'm sure many people share the same view. My man, destabilizing Zambia. Let if, me ask the can't professors. Even destabilize South Africa. <laughs> Sophie, let me quickly ask the professors and see what uh, they think about that. Professor Siap, what did you make of uh, this uh, deportation and this whole big story now surrounding uh, Musi Maimani in Zambia? No, actually, I wish the Zambians were listening to Sophie. As characterization of my money, then if they the did capacity. that, uh, they would have actually have allowed him to go in, because what they have done, they've actually uh, uh, fell into the publicity stunt mm -hmm. that the DA was actually pushing. So uh, I, I do think that they should have allowed him to go in, and um, he will actually discover soon that the, the noise does not work as much as it does. The reason why he's, uh, he appears to be important in, in this country is because he's emboldened by uh, it is, uh, some so-called civil society groupings and the media that they will always amplify whatever he says because uh, the, the, the posture of the media has consistently been anti-government and anti-ANC. Yeah. So, 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 so I don't think in, the, in that country there would have been uh, anything. I think they, they actually they gave him a sense of importance. Absolutely. Hey, Professor Kutsia, what did you think? Yes, I, I think if this incident didn't happen, very few people will know that Musi Maimani was, was actually Zambia. there. So the, the, it's counterproductive in the sense that now it gives the whole situation much more publicity than it would have happened. I think that the reason why Man, uh, Musi Maimani went there is that it's now quite well known in the media. Um, end of last year, there was a grouping formed, a forum of opposition parties in Southern Africa. Uh, called the Southern African uh, Partnership for, for uh, Democratic Change. And he's the chairperson of it. So I think he went in that capa capacity to, to Zambia to observe it. But now it sort of dis it developed into an, a new situation, <laughs> which gives him a lot of exposure and this group, and obviously the person, the, the, the opposition leader also. Mm. Do we do that, Sophie? Do we give uh, certain people amplified uh, noise in this country when it comes to media? 
when a political party or government feel insecure, that's what they do. And they think they're dealing with the problem, whereas mm -hmm. you are just aggravating the problem. I would set, cite an example of, you know, the then former president, Tabun Big in parliament, when yeah. the oppositions were making noise, you just keep quiet. Go there, deal with the issue, sit down. Because the more you engage in confrontation, the more you cause you know, the noise. Yeah. Just deal with the problem. Answer the questions. <laughs> and, you know, you don't have to invite unnecessary uh, uh, negative uh, publicity. I mean, oh, now, right. like I'm saying, many people don't understand and don't, perhaps were not aware that the, the last elections, it was a narrow, narrow, narrow margin. Yeah. Therefore, I think Edgar Lungu must be very, very, very careful. And the second issue is, like I argued, KK Gaunda's party is not in power, the former liberation uh, uh, organization. You have the opposition that is in power right now. Mm -hmm. And it's doing exactly what it accused the then party of doing. Mm. So where are we? All right. Well, unfortunately, that's where we leave it. Sophie Mukwena joining me here for that continental discussion. And of course, on the main panel, let me thank Professor Sepo Siep as well as Professor Dirk Kutier for their contributions this morning. After the break, we talk sports with SABC sports anchor, Mr. Kendall Mahamate. It's all coming up after this. Stay tuned. The Law Society has slammed notices sent to four universities to jack up standards or risk losing their LLB courses. The Council on Higher Education issued a stern warning to the universities to conform within six months. I think it will affect the university. I think uh, um, outside, the, outside the law faculty there's a funding issue. It's been 112 years since Enoch Sontonga died as a relatively unknown composer, choir master and teacher. But today his legacy lives on through his greatest composition, Ngosi Sigeleli Africa. For all your news updates, stay tuned to Your World from Monday to Sunday. Welcome back with, to your concluding Media Monitor segment and we're talking sports now after being officially announced as the new Bafana Bafana coach, Englishman Stuart Baxter named his squad to take on the Super Eagles of Nigeria on the 10th of next month. The two nations will clash in the first Africa Cup of Nations qualifier in Uyo. And Baxter has opted for continuity, retaining the bulk of players that did duty in the two past uh, friendlies against Guinea-Bissau and Angola in March. When I'm looking at the balance of this squad, I want to have, I want to have an alternative. I want a big lad. It was either take Lars, and I, and I don't know him that well. And I, and I think his understanding of the, the African game is still fresh. Kabusa is a player that is a physical presence. Well, joining us on the line is SABC sports anchor Kendall Mahamata to give us his views on the new team. Kendall, thank you so much for joining us. What is your impression about this team? I mean, Stuart Baxter, once again, he retained some of the guys that have been retained or in the, in the past two friendlies with a little bit of young blood here and there. But is that going to be good enough for this friendly? Yes, I think it is. I think one of the things that Stuart Baxter has gone and done is gone. Uh, good morning to you, first up, and uh, good morning to everybody uh, morning, on that Kendall. channel as well. Uh, yeah, he's gone and gone, gone a side that is pretty much experienced. It's uh, Sheikh Mashaba uh, put together a, a core side that has steel in it and has got experience. And I think that's what Baxter has, has done. Uh, the, he's got enough players in there who've been uh, who've been playing a trade overseas as well as a played across the continent. I think he'll be doing well uh, with uh, with this particular side when they go to Uyo on the 10th of June. Mm, do for you, Kendall, were there any surprises in the current team? 
Well, there were, there were two very uh, specific surprises. One was uh, Diamond Topola, the cheaper United defender. Uh, I reckon um, he's, look, he's done extremely well for himself, uh, Diamond, to actually raise up his hands to be included in this side. Uh, uh, but I, I can tell you what, uh, people will not be, will not be um, made sorry by seeing Diamond in the side. And another, another surprise was Jackson Mabokwad. Goalkeeper, uh, he's been yeah, he's been neither here nor there uh, for uh, for most of the season. So that was a bit of a surprise. But having said that, we'll see we'll see how he performs uh, coming on from the bench. Mm, look, Kendall, we haven't been able to qualify for this competition in quite a while. Let's talk about what you think needs to happen going forward to put Bafana Bafana at any chance of getting to at least the semi-finals. I think what needs to happen is uh, the, the, the experienced campaigners need to stand up. Uh, the Sean Poké Kana, the Tugel Rand Diaz, they need to stand up and actually make their presence felt. Uh, cool heads are required. Fire in the belly is required. Uh, you will remember the last time we played in Uyo in Nigeria, we actually at one point were needing 2-0. It was going to be the very first time that South Africa beats Nigeria and beats them in Nigeria itself. But uh, two late goals uh, gave us a 2-2 draw. Uh, having said that, it's it's a... Uh, it's a memory that I think uh, sticks in the, in, the, in the minds of the, of the side, and I think they'll be trying to make sure that uh, they, they, they bring back the same uh, tactical new as well as, uh, as well as a presence on the field yeah. to make sure that if they get a lead, they hold on to it. And that's what they need to do throughout the campaign, uh, to play with their heads but play with fire in the belly. I mean, uh, Kendall, we never talk much about this. I mean, the technical side of the team is very important to when it comes to actually taking the team further. Let's talk about Baxter. Does he have a new technical committee? Do you know of anything around that? And are there any improvements from the previous coach, which uh, didn't do much uh, in terms of winning games? Well, I'll tell you this. In terms of the, 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 the technical side itself, I haven't had much... I haven't had much on that, but I do believe that uh, he, he might have, he might have uh, the, the likes of Eric Tinkler that he's called on board. But I, I think uh, with, with Baxter and his, his knowledge of having had the side, being at the helm of the side mm -hmm. earlier on in his tenure as a, as a coach in, in South Africa, I think he's, he's got the, he's got the, the right uh, headspace to choose the right people to work with him. Uh, he's, seen, uh, he's seen everybody do the, do the private trade across the PSL as well as uh, some from other parts of the world. So I think he's going to put on the right side together but right now as it is i don't have the names with me and I'm, i can't uh, tell you much on that ah kendall you've done enough for me today thank you so much for that sound analysis kendall mahamate talking to us about the latest mafana bafana squad to face nigeria for the qualifiers of the africa cup of nations qualifying round thank you at home for watching our show media monitor we hope that you will join us again same time and place next week that is right here on SABC News at 9 o'clock. I'm back on top of the hour with the sports guru, Maru Mugegana, bringing you AM News. African is beautiful. To be African is a privilege. It represents hard work. It represents being able to stand on your own and respecting other cultures as well. It's about promoting African heritage. We are all Africans. Let's come together so that we can have a formidable force. Our cultures interlink with one another. And by standing together and embracing one another, you know, there's power in unity. It is time to cut off this issue of xenophobia. I stand for African unity. I stand for promoting unity in Africa because there are many opportunities to be whatever you want to be. Africa uh, is one of the most important continents. Because if we can come together as one, we will be able to actually build a better Africa, the new Africa for the future. And if we unite our hearts and our minds together and we go forward, we will conquer. So let us all arise and be proudly African. Being an African is who I am right now. I'm proudly African. I love Africa. Wishing you all a very happy Africa month. One love. Africa.